In this video, we're gonna set up and customize our terminal to make it more appealing and we'll also add plugins that will enhance our productivity. We'll also learn the most useful terminal commands that you may use in your day-to-day -day work. So here is what we are going to cover. We'll start by defining what is terminal and how to use it. We'll learn what is shell and how is it different from terminal. We will customize the look of our terminal and we'll learn some useful plugins and tools for productivity. And finally, we'll learn the most useful commands and shortcuts that you may use in your day-to-day -day work. So let's start by defining what is Terminal. Terminal is just a text-based way to communicate with a computer. Instead of a graphical user interface or GUI that we normally use, like Finder on Mac or Explorer on Windows or Dolphin on Linux. As a developer, you'll spend a lot of time in Terminal, especially when you become more senior in your role. But why do we go to the terminal instead of using the graphical interface? Well, because there are a lot of things that you can only do from the terminal, such as using git commands, or interacting with databases, or starting a server, or executing a script, and so on. And also, when you learn the basic commands, it is much faster to navigate through folders, find or remove things, and run different commands. You might also hear about shell terminology. Shell is the program software that is running on the terminal. For example, the default shell on macOS used to be Bash, but after the recent update of macOS Catalina, it is now Zshell. And I always prefer Zshell over Bash because it's much more customizable, and you'll see why in a second. But on most Linux distributions, the default shell is Bash, and on Windows, it is PowerShell. Now let's move on to the terminal customization. I'll leave these useful resources below to customize your terminal, whether you're on Windows, Linux or Mac. And now I'll show you how I customize my terminal on Mac. With this official guide in Apple website, you can mostly change the colors, backgrounds and opacity of your terminal. But if you want more customizable option, you have to go with iTerm. You can download and install it from iTerm2.com. I personally use iTerm Terminal with C Shell and I customized my Z Shell with this framework called OhMyZSH. Here is how my iTerm looks like and this is my configuration in case you want to set it up similarly. You can also customize your PS1 variable which is this first part that you see in the terminal. For example, if you're on Z Shell, you can pick one that you like from here and apply it by just copy pasting it in your terminal. And there is a similar one for Bash users. And you also have a guide for PowerShell if you're on Windows. And from the oh My Z Shell framework, you can pick different plugins to use. You can see they have 300 plus plugins. But be mindful when adding a lot of plugins, because more plugins can slow down your terminal. You can explore the full list of plugins here. And when you want to add one of them, is by opening your shell customization file. And you add a line like this, plugins equals to, and the plugins that you chose from all my Z shell. As you can see, I only use four plugins here. The Z shell auto suggestions is very useful and it auto suggests my previous commands that I used. For example, if I repeatedly use a long command like this, or let's say I use the same long docker command in a project, I can easily find it with this plugin without typing all that again. The Dear History plugin allows us to navigate the history of previous working directories by using Alt, Left and Right. For example, Alt, Left moves back to the past directories and Alt, Right goes back to the recent directory. The History plugin provides a couple of convenient aliases for using History command. For instance, instead of using History command, you can just use the H command and it does the same. Or instead of History grep, you can just use hs command and so on. And the last one is git, which is one of the best plugins. This plugin gives you a bunch of git command shortcuts. For example, instead of using git add every time, you can just do ga. Or instead of using git commit message and when you typed your message, you can just do gcmsh and then type your message here. Now let's move on to the terminal commands that are the most useful. The commands I'm about to show you work on both macOS and Linux. You can also Google the equivalents of them on Windows. But I will also share the cheat sheets for all of the operating systems, Windows, Linux and macOS. So there are some basic things that we can do regularly on graphical user interface, which are navigating through folders or checking in which folder we are currently. And let's look at the equivalent of them in terminal. For example, if you open a terminal and you are in this folder, let's say, 
If you want to see the files and folders inside of this folder, you can do ls and this shows that this directory is currently empty. Let's say we want to create a file here. You can do touch and the name of your file. Let's say we create a readme file and hit enter. Now if we do ls again, you will see that this readme file was added inside of this folder. Next, we can navigate back and forth between folders. For example, let's say I want to go back to the parent folder. As I said, with the plugin, we can do just alt left and go back to desktop. But if you want to do it with terminal, we can also do cd and dot dot and this brings us to the parent folder. Now, if you want to go back to this folder, we need to do cd and path to that folder which is from the root directory, it is desktop slash the terminal commands folder. And now we are back inside of the terminal commands folder. But if you have the plugin that I showed you, you can just do alt back and alt forward and you can go back and forth between folders. We can use pvd command to see where we are currently in the directory. So as you can see, we are inside of the users, username and desktop and this folder. There is a shortcut to easily go back to the root directory. You can just do cd and the root and this goes back to the root and you can use cd minus to go back to the previous directory you were in recently. Now let's say you want to create a folder inside of this folder. You can do make directory command and then followed by the folder name that you want to create. Let's say new directory and hit enter. And to check if this was created, you can do ls and we'll see that our newly created file and also the folder are inside of this folder. You can also copy files with command line. Let's say we want to copy this readme file inside of another file. You can do cp which stands for copy. The first file is the file that we are going to copy which is the readme and then we type where we want to copy this. Let's say readme2.md and now if you do ls this file was copied inside of this file and we have both of them inside of our folder. You can similarly copy folders, just with folders you do cp-r and then the new folder name. And why we do the dash r? Because we want to copy it recursively. This copies not only the folder, but also the whole directory with its content. If we hit enter and do ls, you'll see that now we have two new folders here. And we can also remove them. For example, if you want to remove a directory, if it's just an empty directory, you can do remove directory and the name of directory you want to remove, let's say new dir. You can see this was removed. You can use the clear command to clear the terminal. Now let's say we want to remove this directory and let's say this wasn't empty. We should do rm-rf and then the folder name. This will delete the folder along with all of the content without asking you for confirmation. And if you do ls you will see that it was removed. And similarly, to remove a file, you use the same rm command followed by the file name, let's say the readme file. And this will remove the readme file from our folder. And now some useful terminal shortcuts. You can use up arrow to bring the last command you typed. When you're writing a command, you can use the history command to see the history logs which you typed in your terminal. And as you saw, you can also use the clear if the terminal gets messy and clear all of its content. That's mostly what you need to know about Terminal. Check out the description for useful resources and see you next time.